Hi, my name is Brian Thompson. I'm the founder of the Batty.com website. That's B-A-T-E-E dot com. Today, we're going to talk about changing the light bulbs in this 84 to 89 cluster. A question I get a lot is, how do I determine if the light bulbs are bad or if they need to be changed? There are four light bulbs that light up the cluster. They're located under these silver covers. And if you take off the trim piece, you'll be able to see the front of the cluster as it appears here. So turn the ignition on. You should see lights under each of these four covers. If you can't tell for sure, or if the cluster is fairly dim, use a flat blade screwdriver to pop off the covers and look at the bulbs. You should see the bulb glowing to some degree. If not, there's a chance the bulb is out. To do this job, you're going to need a 7 seconds inch socket of some sort, and you might need some pliers if your bulbs are fairly stubborn. And you might need some pliers to get the old bulbs out. If we look at the back of the cluster, we'll see five screws in these locations. If you have a 1984 cluster, you'll find a sixth screw sideways located right there. So we'll remove those screws, set them aside, and then we'll take the back off. The bulbs are located under this board. Holding this board in place, seven more 7 seconds inch screws. They're located here, 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 and on either side of the connector, here and here. So we'll take those screws out, and again, set them aside. Next, we'll remove the connector that connects the odometer to the top board. At this point, the top board should be free. We're going to lift on the left and right sides and set the top board aside. Here we see the seven bulbs in the cluster. The white bulbs, they might also be a green colored socket are the illumination bulbs. The gray colors, these might be small green sockets, are the turn signal bulbs and the high beam indicator. We're going to change all seven in this cluster. In order to remove the bulbs, we'll turn them about 1 16th of a turn counterclockwise and lift them up. To remove the indicator bulbs, we'll do the same thing. Turn about 1 16th of a turn counterclockwise and set them aside. These are the new bulbs. When you purchase the new bulbs from us, they come pre-installed in the sockets. If you've gotten any fingerprints on the bulbs when you remove them from the package, go ahead and take a paper towel and wipe the fingerprints off. Do that for all four of the bulbs. Then to install the bulb, we're going to put it back in the hole and turn it about 1 16th of a turn clockwise. We'll repeat that for the other three illumination bulbs. So next, we're going to change the indicator bulbs. The difference between the, uh, the Xenon bulb kit 
and the complete xenon bulb kit comes with sockets pre-installed on the indicator bulbs. If you purchase the, uh, the cheaper kit, you'll need to remove the bulbs from your sockets. And we'll do that for all three. They just pull out with the new bulbs. We'll make sure that uh, the wires are pointing straight down to install the new bulb in your socket. Just press it into place. When you've done that for all three bulbs, we'll reinstall them into the cluster. We'll press them into place and turn them about 1 16th of a turn clockwise until they snap into place. If you purchase the complete bulb kit, it comes with the bulbs pre-installed on the new sockets. Sometimes the bulbs that are sold at auto parts stores um, are sold as uh, a bulb and socket combination and the bulb is not removable from the socket. If you're not able to remove the bulb, you'll need the complete kit. We also sell the sockets by themselves. After you've completed the bulb install, we'll replace the top board. Make sure that the 12 pins here are lined up with the 12 holes in the top board. And then gently press that connector into place. There's also an alignment pin located right here. Next, we'll reinstall the seven screws that hold the top board in place. And we'll use the 7 32nd inch socket to tighten them back up. It's easy to over tighten the screws on either side of the connector, so when you're tightening them back up, be very careful. Finally, replace the odometer connector. Make sure the connector touches both pins and that the wires are toward the odometer. Finally, replace the back and reinstall the five or six screws that hold the cover in place. Recording. Here we see the results of our work. The cluster is evenly illuminated. Before you mount the cluster back in the car, it might be a good idea to plug it into the wiring harness and just make sure that all four bulbs light up like you see here. Also test the turn signals and the high beam indicator to make sure they're functioning properly. Right turn, high beam, and left turn. If everything's working as you see it here, then you're good to go ahead and put the cluster back in the car. As always, to get parts, you can go to my website. The website address again is batee.com. You'll find a link in the description.